Okay. Here we go. Actually, uh, doing this lens review proved to be kind of exceptionally easy. Had a day and a half with the lens. Not taking any spectacular shots with it. Just a lot of test shots. Oh my god, look at the tonality on that one. Um, i be the first guy on YouTube to review the new Fujifilm GFX lens, specifically a G lens, a new 100 to 200 millimeter um, F5.6, basically an 80 to 160 millimeter. Um, by the way, I wanted to do like a, um, a very simple yet perfect analogy in comparing this lens. I thought it'd be a lot larger than this. I wasn't actually, I was highly anticipating uh, getting it, um, but I wasn't paying incredibly close attention to the specification, the size, and weight on this lens. For example, everybody knows what a 70 to 200 weighs. This is a good bit smaller than uh, 70 to 200, but like the Tamron 70 to 200 G2, which is 3.28 pounds, this one is 2.31 pounds. It is extremely lightweight and it's rather small. You have absolutely no issues letting this hang off the front of your GFX. This is uh, going to be a lens uh, with uh, full support for the current two GFX cameras, of which I have both, the 50S and the uh, 50R, and the new 100 megapixel uh, Fujifilm that's coming out in May or June. Um, it's 20 elements, $2,000. Like I said, it's basically a short version of the 7200 at 80 to 160 millimeter. Um, I have every GFX lens made, and I'm not saying that to gloat. I'm actually saying that as a basis of uh, perspective. By the way, I uploaded on my Flickr my favorite lens, favorite lenses, my favorite lens of all time, of course, the 45 millimeter 2.8. It's optical perfection. So too is the 110 and 250 millimeter f/4. By the way, most people said, well, this lens is too slow at 5.6. This is a medium format 5.6, however. The bokeh on it is actually incredible. It's actually a surprise. It gets better. It's actually quite substantially good at 100 millimeter, and I have examples on Flickr and also on Instagram. But it uh, gets better towards uh, 200 millimeters, but it's perfectly wonderful at uh, 100 millimeters. This is about an f4 equivalent um, for uh, 35 millimeter. And like I said, it's an 80 to 160. Um, and I'm not saying this, and I don't make a comment lightly, nor do I make lens reviews very lightly, especially expensive ones. And this is not expensive. I mean, do you know how much the 70 to 200 um, version, which I have, of the uh, Nikkor is? I mean, it's a lot more expensive than this lens is. Um, $2,000 is actually not that expensive. You'll so sure it is. Well, compared to what? I mean, it's essentially the price of a good... Canon or Nikkor 70 to 200. I'm very, very shocked at how lightweight it is. It does have a removable tripod collar, which I am going to remove. And very importantly, it has OIS, optical image stabilization. There are only three Fujifilm lenses, uh, GFX lenses, of the current eight uh, that are out there the 120 millimeter, the uh, 250 millimeter f4, and of course uh, this lens. I can easily say, and I mean this seriously, and I, I, very careful in saying that. Uh, careful in saying that. Uh, saying this. Hello, I've had too much damn coffee today. I gotta stop drinking this mule piss coffee. Yes, I know this is a measuring. Uh, I know this is a measuring cup, not, <laughs> not a drinking glass. But here in the south, we don't give a shit. Ooh, that's some strong stuff. This is easily my second favorite lens. I actually consider this even above the 32 to 64 as number one travel lens. Lightweight, small, compact, and it does have OIS. If you're worried about it not being fast enough at 5.6 uh, for a slight low light conditions, no worries. With the actual dampened shutter mac on the 50R, which it is dampened, everybody that has it notices it, uh, who also has the 50S, combined with the OIS on this lens, you're not going to have any issues hand holding this lens. I'm actually going to remove this tripod collar and uh, leave it off. It doesn't need it. Also, too, like I said, you have no issues with this hanging off your camera. No issues at all. It is so damn lightweight. I actually consider this, and I make the, this statement uh, um, very purposely in saying that this is a much more ideal travel lens than even is the 32-64. Uh, to 64. Why? It's a lot more lightweight. It's more idealized reach. 
Most people will agree that a 70 to 200 is about their most favorite lens for most everything as far as multi-purpose zoom lens. This is basically a short version of that. Um, it's also, like I said, making it the medium format version of a 70 to 200, which is so incredibly useful, and the fact that it has OIS. These uh, other two lenses, the macro, no one's going to consider that for travel. Uh, the 250, not really so much. Love that lens, by the way. I consider it optically perfect. Um, it's a narrow-use lens, as is the 110 millimeter portrait lens. Um, this lens is incredible. Uh, this is absolutely my second favorite lens now, and not because I just got it. I don't ever suffer. A guy like a guy like me with over 500 lenses does not suffer a new lens syndrome. Like, oh my God, it's a new lens, my favorite thing in the whole world. Just because it's new, I, I never suffer that. So, I want to make uh, a bold statement on that. Um, 20 elements, uh, two feet minimum. Um, at 100 millimeters, uh, minimum focusing distance, and 5.2 feet. Very, very close. This is actually an excellent portrait. And the bokeh on this lens is just absolutely, it, it, it just rocks the tonality. I did, the, way, the second worst thing, <laughs> I couldn't resist it. The second worst thing to taking a stupid ass cat picture is taking a picture of a squirrel. Talk about the tonality. I can count every hair on this little, uh, little bastard's head. He's giving me the stink eye and he's got an, uh, an acorn in his mouth. The tonality, oh, the bokeh on this lens is incredible. People say, ah, it's a 5.6, can't have good bokeh. No, it has actually extremely good bokeh. Here's this lens, a 200 millimeter, the bokeh. This is a boring a shot in the world. It's not meant to be. It's only an, uh, a demo of uh, the bokeh output of this lens, and it is, is exquisite. It is exquisite. Um, everybody that actually has a 50S and a 50R, actually, if you're going to do and you do travel with that camera because that camera the 50r is very lightweight and compact so too is this damn lens um i absolutely have all the eight current lenses for the gfx series cameras i undeniably without reservation will tell you flat out this is the number one travel lens even more so than the 32 to 64 which is huge and heavy by the way and doesn't have ois and it's an awesome lens but this is definitely, if I were going to pack light and I only take two lenses with the GFXR to Europe, for example, I would love to take the 23, which is my third favorite lens, but I would be taking the 45 millimeter 2.8 and this lens. I could do everything, because I could crop the piss out of anything you shoot with a GFX. I'd be taking the 45 millimeter 2.8 and this lens. Um, um, said it has excellent OIS, and like I said, you dangle off the end of your camera, no, uh, no worries. Um, I already mentioned that about this being my, undeniably, this is uh, my second uh, most favorite lens. 67mm uh, front filter, by the way. Thankfully, I've got a lot of circular polarizers. For oh, very importantly, and Fujifilm mentions this, if you're a Fujifilm user, you can probably hear it on this 80mm. When the camera is off or when you go to hit playback, and it uh, drops the power to the lens, like on the 80 millimeter. And you hear this thunk. You hear this? You hear this? Listen. You hear that? That's just that there's no power to the lens. So the driven elements are just free sliding in there on the linear rails. In the case of this lens and the 90 and several others, and this is a linear autofocusing system too. Like when I drop the power to a 110 millimeter lens, the GFX lens, this 110 millimeter, which is awesome. You know, you go to preview the shot, you thunk, and you go back to uh, resume photography, and it'll power up, thunk. You turn the camera off, thunk. That has been eliminated completely for turning off the camera, turning it on, or, you know, previewing an image, which, where it, for power saving, it drops power to the lens. Obviously, you don't need power to the lens for pre previewing an image. That has been eliminated. Fujifilm's exact words on this is that no one's mentioned that about this lens. Not any of the, the, the Fuji gurus that have had this lens now for the past two months who also never took a damn bokeh shot with this lens. I could never figure out what the hell is the bokeh on this lens. Nobody took a bokeh shot. Nobody. Not that love groove guy. Not that I'm dissing him or anything. Nobody took a bokeh shot with this damn lens. I thought, well, you know, 5.6 is probably not that good. I know it's a four or five, uh, F4 equivalent. The bokeh on this lens is really damn good. Um, no more thunking on, uh, what is I going to call it? Thunking. You know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. Anyway, um, 
Fujifilm's exact wordage is, this lens also includes a new mechanism for fixing the linear motor position when turning the power off or, pa or playback to avoid any additional vibration. Not vibration, it's called the thunk. Thunk. You just heard it, right? On the 80 millimeter there. Um, honestly, what's this lens for? A lot of people said it's for nature and landscape, which it is. Honestly, I've always uh, considered uh, a 70 to 200 an incredible street lens and uh, uh, photojournalism, photojournalistic lens. And I also consider just the same thing you consider uh, for the 70 to 200. Weddings, photojournalism, for street photography. I mean, there's like, to me, there's like three different types of perfect street lenses. 24 millimeter for full frame i.e. 16 millimeter in crop. Um, of course, it's very subjective, but also 270 to 200, just so damn useful. Um, this lens is lightweight, the OIS combined with, and by the way, uh, yeah, very, very importantly, this lens is sharp as piss. The tonality on it is incredible. I was surprised at that. Um, it's not too excessive at 20. Oh my God, this is the most boring shot in the world, but I can't drop honey like this. I, I always use this as a reference, this stupid uh, moss and mold grow, uh, mold growing birdhouse. Um, no camera I've ever owned, be it uh, X series or D850s, ever dropped the honey. Uh, yeah, uh, this is really, really good. I was actually shocked on this lens. I mean that seriously. Like I said, I do not suffer new toy syndrome. So amazing fast autofocus, amazing bokeh, very, very, very lightweight. It's incredibly, it's just sharp as piss. Um, uh, people say, why not make this lens faster? Why didn't they come out with this lens in an F4 version? Because it'd be huge as hell, it'd be expensive, and it'd be too damn big. You know, it just weren't some Poindexters in Japan at Fujifilm's like, you know, we, let's make this lens twice as expensive, twice as big, twice as heavy, <laughs> which they could have done. And if they did that, if this lens was an F4, it'd be twice as big, not exactly twice as big. Everybody would be bitching, ah, that lens too damn big, it's too expensive, it's too heavy, that thing's too big. <laughs> you know, there's a reason, you know, at 5.6, this lens has OIS. Um, that combined with the day. Oh, I'm so incredibly happy with this lens. I actually give this lens a 10 out of 10. Um, this is going to be one of my top two or three lenses. It might be very, it depends on who the hell drops what. Nikon's not going to drop a damn thing this year. Um, but this very may very well be the, my lens uh, choice of the entire year. Um, holy crap, I was so impressed. I was, I, I really was you know, kind of lackluster, on the, yeah, 100, 200 million, ah, whatever. I, re I, I was thinking, that, ah, I'm not too excited about reviewing this. Oh my God, I'm so glad I got this lens. I am, don't have affiliate links. I don't make any money. No matter what the hell you buy, this lens is the tits. It, it's, it's really effing awesome. It's really effing awesome. Can I say that one more time? It's just, it's awesome. Oh my God, I love it a lot. This is the most boring shot in the world. I did just, uh, for the sake of micro contrast and tonality, you can download. I, my D850, nor my, any of my X series. Sorry about that X-T3, don't listen to what I'm saying. No, none of these cameras can drop the honey like that. That's really, 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 really good. These are not meant to be exciting pictures or test pictures, okay? So don't complain about them, you know? They're not meant to be exciting. This is how I test lenses. Uh, no more thunking. I love that fact. Every time you hit the playback button on an 80 minute thunk. <laughs> Fujifilm finally heard their listeners, and this is the first Fujifilm lens, be it X series or, or GFX series, tell you the G lens, where Fujifilm has incorporated this new design where the lens on a linear lens like this uh, doesn't, you know, thunk. Uh, like the 80 millimeters like that, the 90 millimeters like that, the 50 to 140 is like that, several lenses like that. The 110 millimeter GFX lenses like that, several of them are, but this one doesn't do it. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that sweet? Nobody's talking about this on the three or four Guru Fujifilm X shooters that uh, have had this lens now for the past two months or whatever.
For some reason, by the way, Fujifilm likes to give stuff. I guess because Canadians are so nice, they never say negative things. Fujifilm only likes giving stuff really ahead of time to people in Canada. You know, I can understand why they don't want to give it to me for testing, but, um, you know, I do make them a lot of money. Uh, it'd be nice if I could just... Uh, and I, by the way, I did buy this lens. Yes, indeed. Did not borrow it. Did not rent it. Fujifilm did not send me this. If you don't believe me, dare me, and I will email you the receipt for this lens. Okay? This lens really is frigging awesome. Yeah, I know these are boring shots. I'm just looking at the bokeh. This lens is the tits. I did not think this lens would be anything. Look at the tonality on that. I processed this in Capture One Pro. It's a black and white shot. I didn't really, I didn't really edit it hardly at all. I didn't add any sharpening or clarity or anything. <laughs> oh my god, it looks really, 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 really good. That's... This is absolutely my second favorite uh, Fujifilm G lens. And if you're going to travel with your uh, Fujifilm GFX camera, I think you're an idiot if you don't get this lens. I really do mean that. This is going to be... There's two lenses that I could have. If I had two GFXRs, for example, like I do have two GFX cameras. If I had two, two GFXRs, I would have the 45 millimeter glued on one of them, and I'd have this one glued on the other one. <laughs> Let's drink some more of that mule piss. Oh, God. No one wanted to hear me sipping on that coffee, I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be up all night long, girlfriend. This lens is the tits, a 10 out of 10. I'm completely shocked off my ass. First thing I'm going to do when I turn this video off is remove this uh, tripod collar and shelve it somewhere where it doesn't get lost. I'm going to put it in the box. Because this lens don't need no tripod color. Mm, does not need it. It's very, very lightweight. Actually, I might have put this right on top to, so it doesn't float away. It's so lightweight. Yeah, I know that's a bit hyperbolic, but uh, I think you get my point. Congratulations, Fujifilm. This lens, which I thought would be unimpressive, boring, and dull, is absolutely the tits. Dead serious. I do not take lens reviews lightly. Mm okay? I do not. Because I actually cringe at the thought of someone spending money. Ah, you said this lens was so-and-so, and it turned out not to be. I really never get emails like that. Mm -hmm. I think I've gotten two over the past, literally like two. I get insults all the time for various things, but not because of like lens recommend. This lens is awesome. Thank you so much, Fujifilm. This lens is really incredible. I will shut up now and continue to drink my coffee. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, wait for it. Fujifilm.